Hi, everybody. Welcome to um, Dental Nachos Presents Scary Stories, um, with today's episode being Spooky HR Tales. This is Brandon Hill, the Director of Strategic Growth with Dental Nachos. I'm so glad for everybody was able to join us on Zoom, which you still can do. Um, we're happy to everyone who's watching on Facebook Live, but um, we will be putting the link to the Zoom um, a webinar in the comments on Facebook Live, so you feel free to join at any time. There'll be some conversation in the chat, some prizes for everybody. So this should be really informative and really cool. I'm so glad that here, uh, you know, a few days before Halloween, we can talk about these scary stories. And we're really pleased because we have a really awesome guest with us today to help share their expertise when it comes to these scary and spooky HR tales. Um, we have Alan Hollander. I'll tell you a little bit about him. Alan Hollander is the founder and CEO of ePractice Manager. Um, ePractice Manager, uh, they've been around for over 25 years. And what they do is they help reduce the stress of running dental practices um, in their all and, and you know, for the doctors and for the office managers and staff. They have tools and systems and materials and resources that are available online um, with the main goal of helping doctors focus on patient care so they're not burdened by managing the ins and outs and the minutia, especially the stressful, scary minutia of the practice. So um, without further ado, now, before I introduce you to Alan, Alan told me a little earlier that he wasn't himself today. I don't know if it's because it's Halloween week. I don't know if it's just because, you know, he's been kind of spooked out with some of the HR scary tales that he's been hearing and talking to people about. So he told me to warn you, he may not look like himself, but let me introduce uh, Alan Hollander, um, founder and CEO of ePractice Manager. Alan, are you there? Yes. <laughs> yes, oh. uh, I, I am here. Uh, you know, I don't know. I looked in the mirror a little bit earlier when I was thinking about some of these scary HR stories and <laughs> it just something happened. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say you look bad. Um, I'm just going to say that one of my favorite movies growing up was Back to the Future. And I'm really feeling nostalgic right now. Really feeling a lot of, uh, you know, Doc Brown, 1.21 gigawatts of electricity right now. But that's all I'll say. I won't say you look bad, though, Alan. You, but uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> I hope you're yourself soon once we get through some of these uh, scary stories. But thanks for joining. So tell me a little bit about your background, your expertise, what you've done um, in this world, in this space, and, you know, um, what, where, where you get some of your advice to help Dennis. Well, just what you're looking at here is just tremendous, uh, just tremendous uh, experience, uh, terror, and love uh, emanating from me, Brandon, just <laughs> so everybody understands. But yes, uh, ePractice Manager and what uh, we have been doing in the area of uh, dental practice management has been happening for over a quarter of a century. We have tools and resources, essentially. Uh, what they do is they help a doctor or practice owner, anybody who's managing, be able to focus on patient care because our systems and tools take it off of the doctor's plate, if you will, and allow the doctor to focus on what they want to do and what they should be doing, which is treating patients and taking care of patients. So, so, so in other words, treating patients is more fun than dealing with a lot of the HR and operational issues that, and drama sometimes that goes on in a practice, I guess. Many of the doctors that we meet look like this. <laughs> well, I hope we can uh, help change this. So I'll be sure at the end before this is over to ask you a little bit about more about your company and the things you do to help dentists. Um, I'll tell everybody ePractice Manager is an awesome key resource and sponsor of the Dental Nachos group. And they've been a great resource for dentists in the group and have uh, some cool stuff to talk about uh, with you later. But I want to dig into some of these questions that I've been getting and some of these topics about these spooky HR stories. So um, let me ask you this. What would you say are the main annoyances you hear from dentists about what they have to deal with regarding HR issues. Maybe the you know top two or so uh, annoyances that you hear about. It has to do primarily with uh, when they have to find uh, new employees. That becomes a real that becomes a real distraction, uh, and uh, it also has to do with bringing new people aboard. Uh, right. And, and, and that's what and that's what we we are dealing with. Uh, we're dealing with all the time. It's personnel changes. And then of course you get into other things, just a little bit of a level below that, which has to do with staff who aren't, aren't performing well. Business owners, Brandon, uh, by survey nationally, we're talking about 
anybody from CEOs of large companies to small businesses, which is what most dental practices are, right. are concerned about employee monitoring performance. And, and they don't have tools and resources to do that in most cases. You, you know what, you bring up a good point. And before you go further than that, because you brought up two really big ones. You brought up the onboarding, and then you talked about the managing the performance of employees. So let's get into that onboarding, because to me, there's two components to that. You know, on one hand, it's the, the recruiting and hiring of the staff. And the other hand, it's the actual onboarding them into your system once they get there. What's the harder part? Or are they equal? I mean, what, what would you say? Is it just finding the person or is it really getting them acclimated to the practice? It can be finding the person. It depends where they are in the country. There are areas where it's a little bit more difficult and uh, there, there are shortages. There are shortages right now. But if uh, an individual is good at recruiting, they're going to recognize, Brandon, when you have a diamond in the rough, that's somebody in front of you that you're interviewing that somebody else might pass up on, but they have basic, uh, they have the basic tools, the, the intelligence and the communication skills to really develop into a good employee. And doctors sometimes and office managers don't hire that individual because they don't have the training tools in place. So Got it. yeah, if you have the training tools in place, good job descriptions, good onboarding systems. You can take an individual who's got the basic personality and you can train them and have them up and running in 90 days. So that, 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 that really is a great way of putting this. So, you know, you're killing more birds with one stone by having a systematic onboarding process in place, because not only is that gonna help you with the, the uh, team members that are there or that have already been hired, but it's also gonna help you, like you said, find that diamond in the rough. And I know exactly what you mean. As a person who has hired and onboarded people, not in the dental office, but in other businesses that I've been involved in, I know exactly how often it is that you may see talent. They may not have all the, the experience but you see the talent and maybe you can't hire them because your company or your office does not have the systems in place to onboard them. Act. That's such a great point. So let, let me ask you this other thing, you sure. know, cause someone asked me, you know, the other day, you know, find out the first thing that everybody should do. So if there was just one thing, every dentist, every, you know, office manager, every practice right now, what's the one thing and the first thing they can do right now to get themselves on the right track with these HR and operational issues. Well, they need to designate somebody other than the doctor <laughs> to be the person who oversees personnel and matters like this. Doctors don't, uh, one, they don't want to do this. I haven't met a doctor who said to me, hey, the reason I got into dentistry is because I love to manage, I really want to run a practice. Right. That's not why they're, that's not the passion that got them through their extended and uh, difficult uh, and all the challenges of being educated and getting through residencies. So I know, I know, uh, I know Dr. Nacho Paul, he, he's gonna love the fact that I'm using this example because he says it all the time, this quote, but that everything that uh, matters needs a system and everything matters. So, um, and it also kind of ties into, you know, one of uh, my favorite books in Paul's too, because he talks about it, you know, the E-Myth Revisited by uh, Michael Gerber, that just talks about how no matter how big or small your company is, it could be a mom and pop, it could be a large corporation, you have to have an organizational structure and systems in place that are turnkey. Um, and, and you want to run your business, whether great or small, basically like, you know, almost from the franchise model or, or in a model where you could easily just sell it as a turnkey operation. So to your point, I completely agree. And I hope everyone listening agrees and understands And Any questions, comments, please share in the chat. Um, I know some of the team members from Dental Nachos are there in the chat. Amanda, Natalie should be there um, to kind of pull those questions together and maybe we can answer any at the end um, or Alan can answer any at the end. Also, there's gonna be information in the chat just about how to reach out with Alan. Also, there's some prizes in there that we're giving as Dental Nachos for taking the time to join us and listen to this today. So by all means, please interact and be active in the chat. So. Um, now, let me ask you this. Now, this is kind of weird, but you hear it sometimes. Should practice owners be concerned that some of their employees are too good? In other words, how do you keep good talent? How do you keep somebody from taking that good talent? Do you just pay them more? What's the remedy? Is there a formula? Got to go dark on this, man. That is I, I was about to say, I was about to say, did that question strike a nerve in you? Because that now I, I, you know, 
That, that just put me into a state of terror, <laughs> uh, terror. Those are bodies in the back of the dungeon here uh, of, 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 of doctors who, who just didn't know how to deal with that. Well, look, you, you develop, you develop a team uh, starts from the top, it's top down. And, uh, you know, we discussed earlier that the higher the position you're trying to fill, uh, Brandon, the, the more difficult it is because it's a greater level of responsibility. Right. Right. So, I, I, I can completely relate to that. You know, I have a background in, in banking. I used to manage branches. The hardest uh, staff members for me to get were my assistant manager, yeah. um, you know, my teller supervisor, those type of people. Hiring a customer service rep, hiring a bank teller, hiring some of the, 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 the more frontline positions were so much easier and I think it's because on one hand, the people who are in the leadership positions, they're being looked up to as well. They really have to be extension of the top person. So that's such a good point about the top down nature of it. And, you know, just, you know, that culture being built at every single level. So, you know, what, are, what, are, what, what would you say? Like, how do you do that? How do you, is it just in the hiring process? Because let's say, you know, I deal with a lot of people who are, you know, buying a new practice. So people come to, you know, me and Paul and, you know, we help them, you know, find a practice and, and buy a new practice and they'll come into a practice that has the staff. How does the new owner change the culture if they need to, or should they try to change or should they just kind of go with the flow of what's there? You know, what's the, is there a formula for that? And, you know, is there a system that you can have in place to make that work? Okay, well, the, 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 there, there, there are several things there, but, but uh, what, we always, what we work on with clients and with doctors who do the same type of thing, who are just coming in uh, and taking over a practice is they have to ensure that there is a go-to individual in that practice that they can really work well with, who's going to be their, they're gonna be their go-to, they're gonna be their right arm in terms of implementation of various HR systems. And right. they, they have to have, uh, they have to have a, some type of job description for that person that lays out exactly what they need to do because that when you're building a practice, you have to have the first building block for a doctor is they have this go-to individual that they can really count on. Sometimes it's a relationship that has to build over the years, but we work a lot with clients to make sure that the owner of the practice knows how to properly interact with this individual, nurtures them and really makes them into this resource. And that's kind of that top-down approach. And from there, yeah it can get much simpler. But if you um, don't do that initially, uh, even if you're going into a practice that has an existing office manager, well, they may not, they just, you, you, they may not click with you or you may not click with them. And those things have to be evaluated uh, very, very, you know, as first order of business. What is easier? If you, if you get into a practice and you realize that, you know what, the culture of this practice is just not what I want for you know, now, hopefully you would have figured that out before you bought the practice. Hopefully you didn't want to own a practice so bad that you just bought the practice. Uh Oh, I think we're getting into some other type of conversation here because your face has changed again. Very um, scary stuff, man. <laughs> this is freaking. I, I, I hope nobody's afraid of, of Dracula or vampires, but um, so you've got this practice. Hopefully you made a better choice in picking your practice, not just by, you know, the financial you know, implication and location and all and all the numbers. Hopefully you feel like the staff and the culture of the practice is something that you want. But now you're there and the culture is not what you want. Is it easier to start the process of managing people out, searching for new people and cleaning house? Can you convert any culture in the practice? Good question. If you're this guy, of course you can. <laughs> but but uh, here it's again, it's top down. So does this new owner does this new owner have a clearly laid out mission, a clearly laid out set of guidelines and standards by which he or she is going to operate going forward? You have a whole bunch of staff who are probably nervous about this new individual coming in. The new doctor has to be able to state clearly what their mission, what their objectives are, what their right. plans are in general and lay these out for the staff. And then here's what will happen. 
If the doctor lays those out properly, staff who want to stay there, who can buy into that, they'll stay there and right. they'll become good employees. Those who don't necessarily agree, they'll stand out and they'll show up and more than likely they will just opt to go someplace else. But it starts with the owner laying out what these guidelines are. And then of course, the sooner he or she can get uh, that individual in who can help them implement the whatever they're trying to do, then this practice will gradually start to improve and the culture will start to develop quickly. Such, such a great explanation, Alan. I really appreciate that. And I, and I want to point something out here. For those of you who have been members of Dental Nachos for any period of time, it doesn't take long um, to, to get this. But if you've heard Dr. Nacho talk about um, a lot of the things that make a difference in a practice. He talks a lot about patient communication, but he also talks a lot about communicating with your team um, and using proper words. So things where he talks about uh, uh, not saying you know, policy, but saying protocol just has a different feel to it to a patient, also has a different feel to it to your staff. So if you could create this set of written protocols that are easily accessible that everyone signs off on, that's that's kind of like the culture and the language of the practice. That's how you can get the culture that you want in the practice and your practice can run more efficiently. Um, another thing I'll tell everybody who's like in the chat, um, we're going to actually give away um, one of Paul's courses, um, Systems for Decreasing Dentisting Stress. It's an awesome CE, CE course. Um, there's going to be a code. You can use the code 50 nachos to get that course for free. Information about that will be put into the chat. So 50 nachos. Systems for Decreasing Dentisting Stress. Paul talks about some of these things in that awesome CE course. There's also going to be um, another code that you're going to get. You're also going to be able to get a special discount on any other course um, that you want on uh, the Dental Nachos website using code 31SCARE. will get you $31 off of any other course um, that you see on the website. And I encourage you, if there's any ideas or any issues that you're concerned with, tell us in the chat. Um, we'll be able to recommend a course for you to use that coupon on. So back to you, Alan. So create the culture. I want to create say, the protocol. Hi, you guys. Alan, hey, you Paul's know? here. Yeah, one, two things. One, I can now retire from webinaring because you guys have it. And Alan, <laughs> who comes to someone's webinar house and one-ups them? It's like bringing better pasta to someone's house. So that is really outstanding <laughs> what you got going out. I'm enjoying the content and, and the fun, everything not to eat. So I'm enjoying just sitting back here eating nachos, letting you guys do the hard work. Thanks yeah. for being here, guys. Sure, my pleasure. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> Great to see you, Paul. And, and of course, and Paul and Brandon, you know, uh, our culture is easy to differentiate in uh, our place here because everybody who's really bought in, they have little red marks on their neck. <laughs> and we that's, know that's who a, they are. So that, that's a great hard. way. <laughs> that's a great way, Alan. So I got, so I'm, I'm going to, um, uh, have another question that uh, has been bothering me a little bit, and you've kind of answered it, but I don't know if that you can really can stop this. Are office mutinies really a thing? <laughs> okay, can they be prevented, and can you always see them coming? Hmm. Well, uh, the the uh, the individual who needs to see them coming, if a mutiny is developing, unfortunately. Uh, and this has kind of stimulated my brain waves once again, Brandon. <laughs> but uh, the individual who should be seeing it, uh, if something like that is developing, probably isn't seeing it. Right. They, they have what's called a blind spot. Mm -hmm. And they're not seeing what's going on. There, there is a lack of, there's a lack of uniformity. There's a lack of structure. And certainly, just you were bringing up that, uh, item that Paul mentioned, there's clearly got to be previous issues of non-communication or very poor communication with the team for something like that to happen. The mutiny is way, way, way down on that chain of events. Right. There are so many things that have happened before it. So we see it coming because we come in from the outside. Right. And we start diving in and staff will share their concerns with us, some of which are quite serious. And so you, you can see them coming. And are they real? Do they happen? Uh, yeah, this would go this would go into the darkest, uh, uh, my, the darkest of my appearances here that the uh, 
they do happen. We have walked into practices where the uh, uh, owner of the practice called us. We sent people in to deal with the practice and nobody was home because they, 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 they had left. Where office, wow. an office manager, uh, the doctor had been away a lot. Just an, too much time out of the practice and came back and the office manager who was very good and we were working with very, very closely. Basically, all she left was a little note and her keys on the desk. That's that, not that, fun. Those are, ha- those are horror stories that could have been prevented. Right. And, and would you say, once you have those protocols in place, once you have a, that system, that written system for everybody to follow, is it daily team huddles? Is it, you know, weekly meetings? What would you say is the, 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 the secret, if there is a secret sauce, to preventing it from getting, from getting to that point or to at ma- least make sure that, you know, the dentist or the owner is aware of things going left once they start going left? Great question. Great question, and and it's the it's the it's the regularity and the reminders of why you're there that keep Got people it. there. People don't stick around because of money necessarily. Money is only a factor when somebody uh, just isn't making what they what they need to be making. Then it becomes right. a factor. Then they're they're making they're they're dissatisfied with their pay, as opposed right. to being satisfied with it. And you know, would they'd enjoy making more and getting bonuses that should be paid if they're appropriate. But right. people stay in practices, Brandon, and people stay loyal. Uh, study after study shows because of factors like sense of achievement, uh, self-importance, self-esteem improves, learning more skills, recognizing that they are becoming more valuable to the practice and to themselves as a result of being where they are. That's why people stick around. Right. I agree. Yeah. I, I can definitely relate to that. Um, and, you know, I got one more question for you, but, you know, uh, before we go into, you know, what you recommend and what you can do to actually help dentists and dental offices with some of these issues. But um, I want to let everybody know that this content, um, you know, if you register and you want to see it again, you will be able to get your recording. For those of you who are members of Nacho Flix, this will be uh, put on the Nacho Flix platform. Um, if you're not a member of Nacho Flix, don't know why you wouldn't be. But if you're not a member of Nacho Flix, Nacho Flix is an awesome platform that we have. Um, it's a monthly subscription service that you, you pay monthly and you basically a very small amount and you get access to all the new content, CE, non-CE content, great advice and tips and resources like this that Alan is doing um, on that platform. You can actually get a free month of it if you, um, and, and we'll put this in the chat with the code FREEFLIX. There'll be a link to uh, get Nacho Flix and the code FREEFLIX will get you a free first month of Nacho Flix. So here's the last question. This really came from the Facebook group. You know, a lot of interesting conversations going on in the Facebook group, a lot of real life conversations. And here's one that came up. So a local dentist, this is from a dentist, saying a local dentist just contacted my lead assistant and tried to headhunt her for a position in the practice. My question is, is that ethical? Is it reportable? Would you do anything? <laughs> do you contact the dentist? Do you contact the licensing board? Uh, I've never dealt with something this egregious. Thankfully, my employee is loyal and literally a godsend to the practice and told me about it. Her concern was also about the ethics. So talk to me about this, Alan. I, and now I, I, I'm kind of scared of you right now with that look. But talk about this, Alan. Is this a thing? How, I know it's a thing, okay? Do you prevent it? I mean, obviously, this person was a loyal employee and didn't like the fact that they were being headhunted this way. But we know that's not always the case. Money talks. You got people who will come in, offer you the world. You've got corporate DSOs who will come in and offer you, you know, a bigger benefits package. And, and what, what do you do? What does the, the local dentist in this case do to prevent this from happening? Good, good question. As you can see, that was very upsetting for a moment there. Uh, okay, so uh, look, first of all, to the doctor whose uh, employee stuck around, that's great. Because clearly that there was a sense of, of loyalty there. 
uh, people will uh, job hunt or they'll be open to those types of communication if they have any sense of uh, dissatisfaction where they're working. You can't control, unfortunately, the even if they are unethical or unacceptable actions of other people. It's very, right. very difficult to do. What do you do to prevent that from happening? You, you, you do it in-house. You build, you build your staff, you empower your employees with uh, achievement, with training, with improving their skills. They have a sense of growth. They feel like they're accomplishing things. They are right. on a career path with you. That's really, and you know, sometimes look, Brandon, it gets to a point in a practice where an individual says, it's time for me to move on. Right. Well, you know, a, a, a good employer, if they've done everything they can for that individual, they should, uh, uh, with their blessing, send them off to uh, a, a dental hygienist school or dental school or whatever right. career path they're, they're, they're going on. That's a win, not, not a loss. So I, I've seen individuals and practices, and obviously this doctor who mentioned this has, has that sense of loyalty, certainly from that employee who didn't even think about it. Do you contact the other doctor? Oh, I think if they're trying to poach regularly, perhaps. But you right. know, you're not you're not there as a practice owner to have to deal with people's uh, 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 poor ethical behavior or dysfunctional uh, action. You know, so. You know what, Alan? What, one of the things that you said, and you, you, this was such a great answer from you, and one of the things that you said really stuck out to me as nacho queso gold. Um, and, and I want everybody to kind of get this if nothing else you know and this is kind of in the mode of the whole jbn culture of dental nachos as it is and just kind of doing things right and even paying things forward sometimes if you create the right kind of culture you have loyalty in a different way you can create more loyalty than you expect for example you talked about training and empowering and rewarding i i've worked in several different industries and several different parts of corporate america and one of the things that always would bother me more so than my compensation at times was am I being, am I growing here? Am, is the company investing in me with intellectual capital? Are they training me? Are they making, are they helping me in my career? And what happens is there's certain organizations, great or small, where the culture is, I don't wanna train this person out of here. <laughs> I don't wanna train my future competition. And, and that scarcity mentality, although I understand it, that is how you destroy loyalty internally and externally. Because to your example, let's say you train that person, they go on to do bigger, and better things with your blessing. You now create a reputation for your reputation for yourself that this is a place, this is an office where people come to grow. So you may lose one person, but you may also be the hot spot that everybody else wants to come to. And then you never have those staffing issues. So I think that that's nacho queso gold in talking about how if you, you invest in your employees and reward them both sometimes financially, but not always financially, that is how you create the loyalty. So listen, I know we're running low on time. So Alan, this has been great. Um, and there's, we could probably talk about this for hours, but you have an awesome service. And I want you to just kind of just explain in a few minutes just what ePractice Manager does. I know you solve these problems and I know you make it easy because e ease is the key here. Tell me about ePractice. Tell me about your, your company and your software and specifically what you're doing for the dentist and dental nachos. We've been, thank you. Thanks, Brandon. I agree with everything you just said uh, earlier, by the way. Uh, that's a great way to put it. Uh, we've been doing uh, dental uh, consulting, management consulting for uh, almost 30 years. Uh, we took everything we have, which was literally thousands of pages of content, uh, job job, detailed protocols, job descript descriptions, uh, metrics, how to monitor these things, uh, just even explanations of what should that weekly meeting between the doctor and the office manager be? What is the content mm -hmm. of that meeting? What are the various templates, the most workable templates for scheduling? How do you deal with that problem when, a, when you have an office, uh, a person up front who doesn't know how to deal with people who are calling in and shopping? 
how do you take that person to now uh, uh, get everybody who comes gets on the phone and make them into a patient that comes into the practice? You can do that. And we have all of the protocols and training. We have wonderful, very, very user-friendly videos that are fun to watch. And as you can see, we don't take it too seriously, uh, Brandon. <laughs> But we do, we do get wonderful outcomes and anybody can go to epracticemanager.com. Uh, we have a demo of our uh, tools and software. You can see the simple HR system we have that will help address all manner of HR issues. Everything gets captured online and go to our site and see, watch the demo and if somebody wants to, they can do a free trial for the first month. Awesome. Exactly. We love free around here. We love that word of dental nachos. Don't we all? And they can try all of our wonderful resources and see, what, see if they like it. And you know what? They can download and use whatever they like, whether they opt in or not. So no risk free trial. Not that it's a big risk anyway. This is an affordable service that you've provided yes. um, to make it very easy for people. But it's a nacho brainer. Um, everybody listening. Tell everyone that you know, free trial um, of ePractice Manager Services. There's going to be a link in the chat. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, there'll be a link in the comments to, um, to get that free trial. So please click on that link. Take the demo. This is so easy. It's so needed. Um, you'll be very thankful that you did it. I want to thank Alan uh, for joining us. So, Alan, are you going to be stuck looking this way? Because I feel better now. So hopefully you feel better. I mean, I know you were kind of spooked earlier. Um, just hearing this conversation and some of your solutions has made me feel better. Are you feeling better? I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling much better. And I'd say I'm back to myself now. As in Dracula? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> All right, Alan, this is awesome. Um, if anybody wants to reach you or your team, uh, how, how, what's the best way to reach you? Well, uh, we, we can, we can be uh, reached uh, at uh, through e info, info at epracticemanager.com. We can be reached there. Uh, we can also, here, I'm going to go to myself here just for kicks and just not to, ah, wow. Oh, that's the Alan that I know. Hey, yeah. Hey, no, we, we can be reached at uh, epracticemanager.com. Uh, I can be contacted on by phone, 888. 288-1705 uh, is, is a number that will come into us. Your call will come to either myself or whomever you want to speak to. We do free consultations all the time. We're happy to just answer people's questions when they call in and give them some help when they need it. And at the right time, they can avail themselves of our services, or we just get a, the, the joy of just helping somebody out. So that's Alan, A-L-A-N, at epracticemanager.com or info at epracticemanager.com. And the number is 888-288-1705. Thanks so much, Alan, once again. And there's also that link to get the demo right away that is in the chat. Um, Alan, thank you so much. Uh, this has been great. Come back again and share with us. I'm pretty sure there's no limit to how many. I'm pretty sure I'll get a bunch of more questions questions about crazy HR stuff that I'll probably be asking you, and you'll probably be back on again a little later to share with us again. Everybody, thanks for watching. Um, for registering, you will get a copy of this. Uh, don't forget you'll get your free prize using code 50 nachos. You'll also get the code 31 scare to get a discount on any other CE. So you get tons of CE, um, tons of advice, and you guys have a great rest of your day. Um, and, you know, have a great and safe Halloween as well. I'm not sure what the celebration looks like during this COVID time, but whatever you can do, um, don't eat too much candy and, and don't end up looking like Dracula or any of the scary things that Alan was looking like today. Have a great day, guys. Take care, Brandon. Thank you so much. Thanks, Oli, the uh, nachos out there.